everybody this is father byron and this is claritian youth thank you so much for opening this email and thank you also for watching this video so far please don't pause it don't stop it yet bear with it it'll be like a good 12 minutes for family time this past tuesday we got together and we were talking about the gospel of john john chapter 1 verse 39 in which jesus goes around and calls people these fishermen people and tells them peter included to be fisher of man and certainly this is a time in which jesus is inviting to catch things in our lives that are important what are those things that we should fish in our life what are the things the attitudes maybe um to pick up that unfinished business or maybe um, pick up a good habit something that we can fish and make it part of our life so that we can be the best version of ourselves so this is the moment in which we would like you to have a little dialogue maybe one word or maybe you can write it down or you can text it to each other whatever it is but the question for this week is what is God calling me to fish what is God calling me to fish again what is God calling me to fish something new a new friend a new attitude um, to finish something that I started um, you name it what is it that do you think God is calling you to fish so why don't you talk about it right now I'll wait nah, not really just um, you can pause this video now okay <laughs> that was fast um, now you know we would just like to share for three wonderful people what they have to say about this gospel let's get from memo from chicago and let's hear from lily from saint gabriel mission in california and let's hear from a jesuit seminarian dave and what the take is on this gospel hey everyone uh, my name is guillermo duarte and today i have the honor the privilege to share a couple of words on the gospel um, so first and foremost we're reading john 1 uh, chapter chapter 1 uh, verses 35 through 40 which is an encounter that disciples have with Jesus uh, one of the one of the things that stands out to me the most uh, from this passage is well there's two things one of them is that magnetic uh, relationship or that magnetic attraction that Jesus has to all of us I mean uh, once we learn about Jesus it's really hard to not to dissociate ourselves or to or to um, there, there's just a magnetic pull that we have to Jesus and this is what happens to these, these disciples as they see uh, Jesus pass by and they are immediately uh, they have like a, a conversion or a, a, a something that pulls them towards him and they start following him right they start following him um, and the uh, Jesus asks um, a very fundamental question, which is, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? And that is a question that all of us, we continue to ask ourselves. You're gonna graduate, you're gonna go to college, you're going to uh, get a career, you're going to live a bunch of things in your life and different experiences. And one of the very most important things that we have to ask ourselves is what are we looking for what am I looking for what are you looking for the hope and the goal is that we are looking for a relationship with God we're looking for a relationship with God and a relationship with God to become more holy to become more saintly to become more um, to serve to serve a, a mission we are disciples for a reason, is to serve a mission. And in our lives, I guarantee you, you're gonna face a lot of adversity, you're gonna face a lot of challenges, a lot of things that are gonna push you back and, and, and make you forget about that fundamental question is what are we looking for? It's going to make you, it's gonna distract you. I mean, we're talking about, I mean, a lot of things. You're, you already know, the culture, the world, the way it is. Um, this has always happened, right? This is not new. The world has always had, there have always been things that distract us from asking that question and making that answer be, God, what are you looking for? What are you, what are you looking for? We are here now 
you know, I, I'm glad that you are here and that you're watching this video. Um, but you are here now, and that's that magnetic pull that Jesus has given us, is that opportunity to learn from each other as disciples, learn from each other, uh, talk to each other, speak with each other. So that's one, right? We are already attracted to God. The second part is, how are we going to continue? How are we going to continue to grow in that faith, to grow in that relationship? What are we looking for? in this relationship with God. Thank you for watching. My name is Memo Duarte and God bless you in all of your ministries and all of your missions. God has a great mission for you. I, I guarantee it. Continue to grow in that relationship with him. Don't just read surface level. You know, don't just read the Bible and say, okay, I'm done. Really reflect on the word and really dive into it. Hi guys, my name is Lily. I am a bilingual community giving coordinator and also a parishioner with the St. Gabriel Mission. So in John 1, 35 to 40, John's disciples follow Jesus. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, what do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you'll see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent the day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. So John 1, 35 to 40, John's hanging out with his buddies. They see Jesus, and they immediately want to go to him and they start following him and they end up even spending the night with him and Jesus asks them like what are you looking for and to me this represents a first time encounter with Jesus and it makes me think about where I encounter Jesus and now in this time that we're living in I've been really blessed and fortunate enough to have my family live on the same block my parents live right next door to my husband and I, and my sister lives across the street with her kids and her husband, and we're just super fortunate. I know that this isn't the case for everyone, but um, I haven't been able to hang out with my friends like I have in the past, and I feel like now more than ever, they are making themselves be more present in my life through checking in with FaceTime calls or with text messages, forwarding me like hilarious TikToks that they think are gonna make me smile or warm my heart because it's a video of two little oldies dancing or of puppies playing with each other. Um, I have found that I am seeing Jesus and my friends right now and the way that they uplift me and the way that they keep me positive in this moment in time that we're living through. And my question to you is, if I encounter Jesus in having my parents, my sister, her husband, her kids, my husband healthy and all around me and having my friends check in on me and send me funny videos, funny text messages, FaceTime me, where do you encounter Jesus? Where do you encounter his love, his encouragement to be the best version of you and to just live your life walking in his path? Hi, my name is David. I'm a Jesuit novice. And as a novice, I've had the joy of being on many different adventures. And right now I'm living in Chicago and working as a chaplain in a hospital, which I'm really enjoying and relishing. This gospel reading stands out as unique to me. There are many other parts of the gospels in which Jesus wins many followers by amazing people with deep, profound teachings and great miracles. But here, Jesus is simply walking by. The two disciples don't ask any profound or complicated questions. It's simply two people who want to spend time with Jesus to check him out. And that's what they go and do. Your time with God in prayer, in service, and in whatever else you do can be like this. Sometimes we have big questions or desires to bring to God. And it's good to bring these desires and questions to God. Sometimes it's also good just to sit back 
Put aside any big questions or needs. Set aside any personal agenda and just spend time with God. Experience simply what it's like to be in the presence of God. I encourage you all to spend just a few minutes to relax and close your eyes and imagine what it would be like to be one of those two disciples spending the day with Jesus. Let your imagination run free. What do you see? What do you hear? Smell, taste, feel. How do you and Jesus spend time together? What do you do together? If you talk, what are you and Jesus saying? What's it like for Jesus to be around you? And what is Jesus like for you to be around? Is it comfortable? Uncomfortable? Calming? Exciting? Something else? There are no right or wrong answers and no reason to judge what comes to you. Simply let God speak to you through your imagination. Thank you so much for taking this time with me. And God bless you on your journey ahead. Well, I hope you enjoy this moment and I hope you enjoy this effort that we're making for you. And again, just keep the truth in front of you. All this is for you. And this is how God is fishing you to his kingdom. This is how God is calling you to be yourself and to be awesome and just to make some room, some space in your life for God. If you do that, nothing will get on your way. See you next time. This is Father Byron and this is Clarition Youth.